if you step on the devil's territory, he will bite you. He's not just going to bark at you, he's going to bite you, meaning he's going to oppress you, he's going to demonize you and he's going to control a part or an area of your life. We have to be very very clear about it from the beginning because people, there's these people who always say things like, oh, you know what, Christians cannot have demons. Listen, Christians, I like what Isaiah says, Christians can have whatever Christians want, okay? If you open the door, like in your house right now, where I live, it's summer, if I open the door, I cannot control what flies through the door. It could be wasp, it could uh, be a fly, it could be some kind of a uh, mouse can come in, anything can come in. So once you open the door to the devil, listen, anything can come in. You don't choose what kind of spirits will come in. And you cannot hide behind the thing, well, the Holy Spirit lives in my spirit. Yeah, but you're living like the devil. Well, well, you know, I got baptized and I speak in tongues. Yeah, but you're watching porn. Yeah, but you, you still have a dream catcher in your room. Yeah, but you're still holding unforgiveness. Yeah, but you're still practicing those things which are not supposed to be practiced by Christians. And so I just want to challenge you today. Be a Christian, okay? Not just Christian by profession, but be a Christian by possession. Be a Christian by practice. And that's when you close the door to the devil. Now we don't blame demons for everything that is happening in our life that is bad. Please, please hear, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. Demons are not responsible for everything. There's still flesh, there's still the devil, but they're responsible for a lot more than many of us are willing to admit. And so let me just go quickly through these doors. The number one door, open door to demons is, inherit, in, uh, is generational curses or I call them inherited demons. It's when you inherit demons through the bloodline. If somebody did witchcraft, somebody did a cult and then they got those demons and these demons got passed on to you through the blood. Number two reasons or number two open door for demons is when you been as an unwanted pregnancy. In other words, it happens when you were still in the womb. Especially when there's resentment, when there's rejection of the baby, when parents did not want to have the baby, when parents express deep, um, um, just this deep hostility toward being pregnant. And a lot of times what happens is that becomes an open door for a spirit of rejection to enter a baby. And then this spirit of rejection then begins to manifest in the person's life later on through rejection and as well through rebellion. The third open door to demons is growing up in a broken home. What happens is when you grow up in a broken home where there is divorce, especially when you are very young, something begins to happen. It creates pressures for you in early childhood that you cannot handle. You were not meant to handle those pressures and that becomes an environment for demons to enter and begin to harass you and to begin to torment you. And a lot of times people begin to make vows, you know, I'll never do this, I'll do this. They become hateful toward their parents and not realizing that the spirit of hatred and spirit of anger comes into them because they grew up in an, in an environment that was broken and in an environment that the enemy used to enter into their life. Number four is when you get involved with the occult. When you get involved with the occult, you open the door completely and you put a sign on your life saying, Devil, welcome into my life. Uh, things like astrology, witchcraft, black arts, fortune telling, black magic, white magic, a Ouija board, spiritism, tarot cards, horoscopes, talking to the dead. It involves things that today in the culture everybody's open about, but the scripture is very clear from the beginning that when we go to the other side, we invoke and we invite demonic forces into our life and God does not want us to go to the other side. Come on, if, if you are part of the light, not of the darkness, if you're part of the kingdom of Jesus, come on, spam the chat right now, drop that number one in the emoji. If you're part of the kingdom of light and you are, you, you will have nothing to do with the kingdom of darkness and with the works of darkness, spam that chat right now, drop that number one. The fifth open door to demons is when you're taking part in false religion. It's when you are taking part in false religion. Now, how can a Christian do that? You'd be surprised what Christians are capable of doing. Jesus said anything is possible to those who believe and a lot of times and I'm going to take this verse out of context for just a moment but honestly believers are capable of doing some pretty dumb things and I've seen this where Christians would go into Mormonism where Bible believing spirit-filled Christians will you know keep their minds open to the demons of deception and they would um, embrace Buddhism, they would embrace Hinduism, they would embrace uh, Kandalini, they would embrace Tantra, they would uh, embrace mantras, they would embrace all kinds of Confucianism, they would embrace all kinds of Jehovah's Witnesses. I, I saw one person went to Mormon church just because they paid the rent and so they're like, yeah, I'm still a Christian, but I'm just getting, I'm collecting some stuff from Mormons and uh, they took on part of their ceremony. Like that stuff is not, is, is not innocent, my friends. Like, this whole idea that many roads, you know, lead to God, new age and all of that, you know, being open-minded to that, my friend, this is not, I know that I can get labeled and on TikTok, they uh, blocked one of my videos because of a hate speech 
because I was full-blown that Jesus is the only way to salvation. My friend, Jesus is either a liar, Lord or a lunatic. He did not say He was one of the ways to salvation. He said He was the way to salvation. He's the way, the truth and the life. And if you believe that, come on, drop that number one in the emoji. If you believe that Jesus is still the way, the truth and the life and there's not many ways to God, there's only one way to God. There's many ways to hell, there's many ways to demons, but there's not many ways to God. There's only one way to God and that way is Jesus Christ. And if you open yourself to false religions, you're gonna get a demon. That's 100% guaranteed. Number six, uh, open door to demons is when you're bringing demonic objects into your life. You have to understand that spiritual power flows through people, places, animals and objects. Uh, you know, God used Moses' rod. He used the waters of Jordan to heal. He also used the saliva of Jesus. He used the handkerchief of Paul. He used the, um, all of these different venues, if I can say, mediums or objects to express His power. The same thing can happen with demonic things. When you bring demonic objects or demonic books into your house like horoscopes, like magic, like charms, like dream catches, Ouija boards, tarot cards, horoscopes or all, uh, all other things, you are inviting demons into your life. You can have a demon just by getting those things. And so I want to encourage you today to live a life closing your door to the devil and opening your life to Jesus Christ. Number six, open door to demons is abuse and trauma. We're just covering the basics right now so that we can build on that and talk about self-deliverance. Abuse and trauma, it's probably the most widely open door to demons, especially in the Western countries where demons enter through abuse. They, they enter through rejection, they enter through rape, through molestation and abuse creates inner hurts and bitterness in people and demons take advantage of that. Now I understand you may say this is not fair um, but you must understand is that it's not about fairness in here, it's about the laws, the spiritual laws and when a person is abused by another person, it's, it's what happens is the demons enter. Uh, we prayed for deliverance of people who had spirits of lesbianism, spirits of homosexuality that enter through abuse and like the human part of me is like why this is not possible, you know, the person who abused them should have a demon but that person who abused them already has a demon and that's why the victim got the demon is because the perpetrator imparted that demon through that abuse. Number seven, open door to demons is sexual encounters. Illicit sexual encounters open door to demons. Sex is not just a physical act, it's a spiritual matter that affects the soul and which is the center of your mind, your will and your emotions. An individual becomes one flesh with another individual when they have sex according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. Condoms can protect you from sexual disease but they cannot protect you from sexual demons. Demons can be transferred from one person to another through one sexual act. You can get a demon through sex. You can be actually initiated into kingdom of darkness through sex. There are prostitutes that are on the mission and there are women and men who are on the mission to initiate people into kingdom of darkness through collecting people's sperm or through having a sexual relationship with somebody. That's why as Christians we have to live a pure life, not only so that we can have a blessed life but so that we can be protected from the demons that get transferred through sex. Not only diseases get transferred through sex but also demons. Number eight, open door to demons is abortion. When we commit injustice against others, it brings a curse upon our life. Bible is very clear about that murder is sin and not only murder is sin but it reflects the author of that spirit of hate and death and that author is Satan himself. When you commit abortion, you get a demon. And that's one of the reasons why people who suffer, who had an abortion, you know, they a lot of times struggle and they battle with depression, they battle with anxiety. And not here today to make fun of anybody or to belittle anybody who's going through that there's hope for you and you can find repentance today and Jesus is the door to the green pastures called the freedom in Jesus. But these are doors to demonic influence and these are doors to getting demons into your life. Number nine is entertainment. The word entertainment already has word enter in the beginning. When we begin to allow ourselves entertainment that is not godly, when we begin to fill ourselves with entertainment that is worldly, entertainment that is terrible, what begins to happen is that we open ourselves to demonic, not only demonic influence and demonic presence, we open ourselves to demonization. Movies, TVs and music are portals through which demons fill today people's lives with their spirits, their presence and they attach themselves to a particular individual. That's why porn is called adult entertainment and so it's a portal for demons when you 
begin to watch pornography, when you begin to consume all of this garbage. That's why, you know, I think it was Isaiah said, he says, you know, cell, it's good, they call them cell phones, you know, cell. It's like a prison. And when you are on your phone, you constantly, you know, keep your head down. You know, that's exactly what we do when we show reverence and awe to somebody. We bow before them. And today people bow before their God, their cell phone. And some people are addicted to things like technology. They're addicted to things like movie, like video games and all of this stuff. And these addictions, my friend, they're demonic, okay? And one man of God told me one time that was really, it, it shook me to my core. He said, if you're addicted to anything, you got company. He said, if you're addicted, you got company. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. If you're addicted, you got company. And so if you are addicted, my friend, if you cannot live without something, you got company. And my friend, that's not Holy Ghost company. That's a demon devil company. And the Lord's going to set you free today in Jesus' mighty name. The only thing that you should be bowing to is your Bible app in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that's right. And oh, the door number 10 is a moment of weakness. Devil seeks for weak places and weak moments where we snap. And a lot of times when we snap, um, he enters in. When we snap in anger, in wrath, um, in getting into porn, when we snap in some of these behaviors and through weakness, guess what begins to happen? Is that demon of anger enters in, that demon of pornography enters in. And how we know that is because after that point, that area that, that before be was a struggle now become, became a habit. That area that before was just a choice we could make to do or not to do, now that choice became a chain and that chain became a cycle. Come on somebody, that's good preaching right there. That used to be a chain, it used to be a choice, now it became a chain and it became a cycle for future generations. And so when you snap, when, you, when, when the, the straw breaks the camel's back and you just like, you know, those weak moments, what begins to happen is the enemy, come, the enemy can come in. You know, a, a man who's constantly under stress, constantly under just overworking himself and then comes home and see children crying all the time and children whining and the wife didn't prepare the lunch and, or, or dinner and you know like and the, the house is not clean as he wanted and he just had it enough and he just lets them have it. You know opens his mouth, screams and yells and just snaps and usually after that they say and he's never the same after that. He always snaps now, he's always angry, he's always irritated, he's always you have to walk around eggshells around him. Why? A guy got a demon. A demon entered him during that weak moment and during that weak place in his life and now he needs deliverance.